what is he right? And to the Mecca audio crew, enough respect. To the one, one, two, enough respect. It's time to put the Bouncy Boy business in check. Cause when I flex for the steps and expect two snacks, I see the booty be bouncing at the disco tech. I like to know what I got and where I'm at is all that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's nice and fat. Another one. Okay, people. Right now, we're about to call Puff's ex-bodyguard, Gene Deal, the real deal. Trust me. Let's see if we can give him a call right now. Just going to jump into a little couple questions, you know. See if we can speak to the Don. All right, let's go. Yo, Gene. What's up, man? What's good? What's poppin'? Uncle Drama, UK, bro. You good? All right, Uncle Drama. What's up, Playboy? I'm good, man. Listen here, I woke up with a with a breath of fresh air in my mouth this morning, so I'm good. I hear you, brother. I hear you. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks, bro. So, how's things over there? How's things over there in America right now? Well, it's the same old thing. It's raining where I'm at right now, but as far as uh. Me not getting where I'm trying to go with this stuff, you know, ain't nothing changed, man. You know, it's a grassroots. It's like I'm taking a hammer trying to knock down the Empire State Building and, you know, one chop at a time, one head at a time, but I'm not going nowhere with it. I'm just steady chopping at it, man, trying to get it done. I hear that, brother. All right, brother, let's jump in, yeah? All right, Gene, so can you tell... The listeners, yeah? Can you just tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and where you're coming from and, and how you started in the game? How did I start in the game? Yeah, the, the, like looking after people, the security, bodyguarding, or just being the man. It's a long it's a, it's a long story, man, but, you know, my first bodyguard job was with this uh, gospel uh, spiritual religious group with Sweet Honey and the Rock. I took them to Carnegie Hall at their performance, Carnegie Hall was a big, big hall that people, you know, come from all around the world to perform in. And uh, that was when I got the niche that that's what I wanted to do. Okay. But I've always been the type of dude, even in school and college, when I played ball at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, that I was always the enforcer for us that, you know, I want to fight the bullies. You know, I've always you. been the one that Yo, you do that to him, but you're not going to do that to me. Got you. you know, take up for the guys who couldn't take up for themselves. Or, you know, if I see something that was, didn't seem right, I was that dude that would help out the kids. Or I see somebody picking on somebody, you know, because, you know, I, I never thought that was right. You know, people shouldn't use their size or what they got, you know, over somebody to, you know, do them wrong. True. So I've always since been that, little, that dude like that. And, you know, I trained in boxing. I trained in karate. You know, I trained karate under Cedric Malone. He was my sensei. I trained in boxing under Benny Smith, you know, from the Salvation Army. They was like, they had like a boxing club. So, you know, I've always been, you know, one of those guys who was athletic and wanted to do things, you know, in a positive sense. So I got into the game as far as in uh, New York that we, every block, and every section of town had their own crew. So I got a, uh, with ASAP first, Father D first, and a couple other more guys, uh, uh, Rick Dog, Tone Wap, Tab, and Mike. And we started a crew called The Same Game. A year or so later, that's how Sean Puffy D, uh, D first, ASAP first, Father brought uh, Sean Puffy Cone, uh, which y'all know as Diddy now, uh -huh. to The Same Game. So uh, he was having issues and he was having problems, you know, because he was giving parties and stuff and he needed security. So my man them asked me to look out for him. So that's how I got into it with the, with, with Puffy. But a guy named Tim Dog who had the Lost Boys. Lost Boys was a group back in the 90s and yeah, I remember stuff them. like that. Yeah, I remember them. Tim Dog, Tim Dog was a, you know, he worked for Aris, but then he went to Island Records. And he used to have me come and do all the security at the front door for all they parties. Got you. So, you know, that let that, that went from one thing to another. And Puff uh, got in that trouble with children in Atlanta 
and um, I started working personally for him. All right, all right, got you, brother. All right, so that's a quick breakdown. All right, so let's jump in, let's jump into the five questions now, Gene. Yeah. First, that wasn't one of them. No, 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 no. That was just for people. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, bro. Me, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. You, you, you forgot who you know what I'm saying. Not only I'm street educated, I'm college educated. I got my degree. <laughs> no, no, no. We know, we know you. One of me, but go ahead, bro. We know you're the man, G. First question I'm going to ask you is, yeah? When Wolf, rest in peace, told you that he was not going to LA with, with Big and Puff, what was going through your mind knowing that all the responsibility and everything is going to be on your back? What was going through your mind, brother? But see, what happens is, is that, you know, me and Wolf, what people don't understand, we always had our own contract with Bad Boy. Yeah. I have my contract. That means that I get paid my money. Nobody pays my money. Directly paid from Bad Boy. Wolf got directly paid from Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So what happens is that I can't tell another man how to make his money and what to do. Yeah. Because you know every time I'm with Puff and Wolf is there, I'm the one next to Puff anyway. Yeah. Wolf is always out, you know, partying and having fun with the girls. He's looking and watching at Puff, but you know, I was the dude that's always watching. Okay. You understand? And they made it clear to me that we wasn't going out to the hotel. We was only going to do meetings. This is what they told me, which was bullshit. We was only going to do meetings. We was only going to go to uh, the studio, and that was it. Okay. So I felt that if that was all it was going to be and do video shoot, then it was cool with me. You know what I'm saying? I, I had no problem with it. You understand? Because nine times out of ten, those pussies are heavily guarded, and if somebody's going to see you, they they really not going to see you unless somebody set you up. Yeah, got Go you. Ahead. Got you. All right, next question is, yeah, after Biggie Smalls got killed, at that moment, yeah, what was your feelings knowing that you tried everything in your power that night to try and stop that from happening to him? How did you feel? What was going for you at that point? Well, when we pulled him out of the car, I knew Big was died, had died. I knew he was dead when he pulled him out of the car. Because he had defecated and urinated all over his stuff. Yeah. And we were just uh, grabbing dead weight. You know what I'm saying? And I actually dropped his leg because I, you know, I was like, oh, shit, this kid is dead. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It fucked me up. Yeah. But now everybody's in the hospital. And uh, what happened was somebody had got it mixed up on one of the blogs. Like, it was 23 of us that went into the Vibe party together. Only 11 of us was there. Because the other 12 had went to a party that Steve Stout had given. You know what I'm saying? Okay. In the hills. Okay. So they left us at the Vibe party. So now they didn't heard that Big got killed and everybody running into the hospital. Now they calling a commotion in the hospital when the doctors was trying to see other patients and see other people and everything like that. Yeah. So I just broke ugly and said, yo, y'all get the... F out of this hospital. Yeah. Said, Get out of here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Let these people do their job. Yeah. And then Puff ran from the back and he grabbed my arm. He said, Gene, Gene, we got to pray. We got to pray. And I looked at him. I said, and just pray for what? And, you know, I didn't mean it in that sense. I said, pray for what? That nigga's dead. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So yeah. I was in disgust that, you know, one, that, you know, how dare you, you know what I'm saying? Now, we, we don't supposed to even be here. Yeah. But now you're going to, you know, we got to pray, we got to pray. We ain't have to pray if we stayed home. True. True. Very true, brother. All right, number three is kind of into number two also. What was your... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 Uncle Drama, that's really number four. I want you to know that, but we're going to stay three. <laughs> all, right, right? all right, all right, all right. Uh, what, what was it? What? You're telling me that's how they called over in, uh, uh, they, they, they called over London, uh, England like that, man? <laughs> <laughs> the first one, we just go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. What, ahead, brother. What, what was your feelings towards Puff when you got back to, to New York after... Biggie well, Smalls died. Well, see, I didn't have no feelings towards Puff and them like that until they try to, you know, throw everything on my back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Puff 
has always been like a little nephew to me in a sense. Yeah. You understand? He's younger than me, but he don't listen. And he never really listened because I was in that city college tragedy with him when nine people died. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So until they try to throw it off on me, I didn't have no feelings for it. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know, I was always, I was never big bodyguard. People don't understand that. I was always puffed personal bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. But if I could save this kid, if I could put, if, if I had to give up my life for big, I would have done it. And people would know who around me know I'd do that without a problem. You understand, man? Because listen here, man, all you got to, as a man is camaraderie with another man. And what I mean by that is that, listen here, man, if I got to lay down my life for a friend, you know, I lay down my life for my friend. Yeah. But I was puff bodyguard. You understand? So, you know, we had a relationship that was like, you know, yo, I'm I, I'm mad because now y'all trying to put it off on me. And what I mean, they try to put it off on me. They told the, the LAPD and all of the detectives, gave them all of my information and had them people coming at me. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. And he didn't give me no lawyers to hide behind. I, I, I worked a job. I worked a government job. So, you know, they looking at me crazy now. Yeah, course, 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 course. Right. Last question now, brother. Last one. All right. If you could speak to Biggie Smalls and Tupac right now, what would be your words yeah. for those brothers? Bro, like, that's a real deep question. Uh, 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 because, drama, listen here, man. Those were kids, man. Yeah. You know, and um, I tried to talk to Big, and I'm giving you this right here. I tried to talk to Big that night before we left uh, Andre Harrell's house, and they was playing it off, and they played with it. You understand? Yeah. Um, I can't say what I would say to them, bro, because I don't know. But if I had to get them guidance and everything like this, Y'all don't have to, you know, be friends, and y'all don't have to do this, but you guys don't understand that the power that both of y'all had caused a lot of people to be against each other. And that's the way that society wants us to play against each other. Of course. You understand? Of course. You know, you, 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 you two united in a front. Y'all ain't got to be cool with each other, but y'all united in the same purpose, you understand? Give us a bigger, a bigger avenue, a bigger auditorium to to to, to, to be in, to, to fight in. Yeah. Give us more direction. But y'all being against each other, man, y'all minimizing us and y'all y'all playing us, you know, into this little uh uh, uh war that these people want y'all to have, man. <laughs> to sell their newspapers. Yeah. Sell their albums, their records, and everything like that, man. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Because you know what I'm going to say, Gene, yeah? What I'm going to say to you is that when I listened to Tupac's side and what people said and what was going on and how his thing was going down and when I watched Biggie's side, when I watched what you said on your interview, you seem like the only person on both sides that was actually realising how serious this thing is. It's like no one never... No one never really, to me, what I see is that no one never really took the thing serious until the people died. But it coming like you got the opportunity to see how serious it was just before that even happened to Big. Yeah, but you got to understand this, and you know, I think Method Man said this too, right? Is that when, and, and I heard Jamie Foxx say this, say this also, I was at his house before with Scott Storch. And he said, when you bring guys from the street into their camp, and their livelihood is selling drugs and killing each other and robbing and stealing, they don't have the same mindset as you True. in the business. True. You understand? Because I deal with those guys for the last 27, 30 years, you know, on what I did for a living. You understand? And me knowing the streets and having brothers that was in the street, you understand? I know the concept and what they're dealing with and what they're coming with. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. That's why I can always 
go and maneuver around the the situation and get puffed out of shit and stop shit from happening before it happened or knew it was coming before it came. You know, I had those people in the street that will tell me, let me know. You understand? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So they don't understand, they never understand that, you know, if you say one thing, you know, if a, if, if a chief say something, you know what I'm saying, the Indians may react. True. So those guys being chiefs in their camp, if they say something, the, the, the people around them may react. But they really don't mean them for them to react in the manner in which they did because it's just rap, it's just talk, it's just bullshit. But they don't take it there because they live in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what it is as well, Gene? Imagine if there was 10 of you on Biggie's side and 10, 10 of you on Pac's side. They probably wouldn't have died, bro, because you sound like the only person that was really putting out. And, and, and I've never heard no one on Tupac's side say that they was putting out. I think everybody was just enjoying the laughter, the hype, and the fun. But when it all kept, when the smoke clears, you know, the guy's gone. And you sound like the only person on both sides that was really looking into the danger and trying to prevent it. Everybody else was just going for the ride, bro. So, you know, i got to take off my hat to someone like you, bro, because, you know... You, you're just a real person, bro. You're a real guy. You never compromised nothing, and you just kept it real 100, brother. And I've got to say, God's blessings to guys like you, brother, because they don't make them. They don't make them a lot nowadays, bro. And that's just real. I appreciate. I, I appreciate it, Uncle Drama. You know, um, my whole thing about it is, man, and people who know me on a personal level know that. I've always been for the uplift of whatever situation I'm in and the people. I help buy guys jobs. Uh, I, you know, help whatever I could on different situations. You know about a couple of things that cool. I've actually saved guys' lives. Cool. You understand? I try to stop certain situations. I even told you about, you know, a little thing about the 50 and the Ja Rule thing. I got, you know, I got so I've been in the middle of a whole lot of shit here in New York. I've been in the middle of stopping and having people come together and conversating instead of going out, you know, taking each other away from their mothers, their fathers, their sisters, their brothers. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And their family members. Yeah. And it's about that. It's about the upper, and the upper lip and mobility. If somebody's going to do something to me, man, they're going to do something to me because I was trying to do right by somebody, not yeah. because I was trying to do wrong. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate the interview, man. I hope it goes far or whatever it is, man, or whatever you're trying to do with it. Uh, like, I was going to start a podcast, y'all. I'm really debating that, man, because this ain't my life, bro. You know, yeah. I'm not trying to, you know, be in the media like that. Like, today, I'm going to shoot some stuff, and I'm going to tell you what me and you talked about, about Tupac's death, what yeah. I know or what, and some of the things that I've heard. You understand? Yeah. I'm going to talk about big and them stuff like that, man. And I, I pretty much want to be dead with this other than doing a book or trying to do a book about my life because I think that, you know, I got a lot of stories to tell. A lot of stories. For sure. I can name 10 people that I got stories that you were like, wow, from Jennifer Lopez, Fat Joe, uh, Deion Sanders, uh, Scott Stewart, 50 Cent, Ja Rule uh, Dougie Fresh, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, street street guys in, in New York City and, and, and how I played a big part in a lot of the crew activities where it was, you know, the games, things and stuff like that, how, you know, stopped a lot of stuff. I gave one of the biggest, uh, with some other guys, I gave one of the biggest picnics ever in New York history when it was over, uh, over 30, 40,000 people in the park and there was no incident. You hear me? Yeah. Not one incident. Yeah. I gave it with Black Hand, same game, Flicking the Family, 12th Street Posse, All Stars, Best South, NFL, all of these crews you see up on the internet, they talk about their stories. I put that together. And it was one of the best times people ever had in New York City. They, they always talk about it. And yeah. it was not one incident in the park. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's where we need to be at with our people, man. 
instead of this new millennium thing where people don't care about other people's lives and they lives. Yeah. All right? Yeah. But uh, I just want to say in closing, yeah, I just want to say, Gene, yeah, God blessings to you, bro. And, you know, we go, in life, we got to start celebrating real people, bruv, you know, like yourself, because we always celebrating the wrong stuff and it, turns out to be nothing so real people like yourself god bless you bro and you know like you said you're always fighting for the right and i know god's gonna bless you bro because if, if it can make someone like me from england get in contact with you and tell you how real you are and how true you are to to, to yourself and other people then you're definitely doing a blessed thing bro i just want to say god bless you bro all right Uncle i want to give a shout out to one of my peoples over there Hey, she got a book called The International Matter. Now, she was a part of that bad boy situation, and somebody in bad boy got her caught up in uh, um, a lot of trouble when she can't come back to the state. Okay. So people need to go get that book and check out that, man. Uh, it's called The International Matter. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it tells, it tells her story and how she got caught up with one of the other top dudes in bad boy and now she cannot come back to the states, and she, you know, she did time behind that in the whole nine yards. Yeah, all right, it's yeah. a true story. All right, but Gene, let me ask you one thing, bro. Do you know? Do you know Tony De Niro? Tony De Niro. Yeah. Yeah, I know Tony De Niro. Huh? That's my dude. I used to. I used to when I used to come to America. That's who I used to par with, but he wasn't, he wasn't, he, he wasn't. He's the hang out with Puff, you know that, right? Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying, but that, that time when I was parring with him, he wasn't hanging around with Puff no more, but, yeah, that's my dude, man, that's my let dude, bro. Some, let me tell you a funny story about Tony De Niro. Tony, see, Puff uses people to get what he wanted to get. Cool. Tony De Niro knew all the girls in California and all the girls. Tony De Niro had a lot of girls, you know what I'm saying? Did you know that about him? You, come on, man, that's, that's T, bro. Yeah. Tony Zero had a lot of girls and everything like that. And he's the one who actually gave that dude Farnsworth Bentley his name. Huh? Derek Bentley's my bridging as well, you know. Yeah. He gave Farnsworth Bentley his name. Tony De Niro gave him his name. Yeah. I don't know what Bentley got that story from. That's how he got his name and everything. No, we was outside and, and he was like, yo, we got to think of a name for you. And he said, yo, Bentley and all like that. Yeah, nah, nah. Yo, you got to be like Farnsworth. You, you, you got to be like on the hip hop side dress. He was giving his whole persona. Yeah. He said, yeah, yeah, that's your name, Farnsworth Bentley. Yeah, yeah, Tony yeah. Tony Gennaro gave him that name. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's my dude, man. Trust me. That good guy, man. Looked out for me enough, enough bro. Yeah, he, Tony Gennaro was a good guy. He's yeah. always the same person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was around. All right, my brother. Enough love, enough love, enough respect, brother. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a get this pushing, bro. All right, do your thing, bro. Enough love, brother. Respect, yeah. God bless, bro. All right, bro. Bless. So what is he right? And so the Mecca audio crew, not respect. So the one, one, two, not respect. It's time to put the boxy boy business in check. Cause when I flex for the steps and expect.